Hello, Rob Lambert here with Asset Protection Training. Today I'm going to talk about what I perceive as the perfect financial storm, which is very probably just around the corner. I hope I'm wrong, but at the very least, this makes for great cocktail party conversation and it'll give you something to think about over the next couple months. What is this perfect storm? This perfect financial storm has three steps, and the first step is happening right before your eyes. You're watching uh, the news and you're seeing that Mitt Romney's financial history has become a major issue and I suspect Obama will make it the major issue of the campaign. We have a very wealthy guy. Uh, he claims a net worth of 250 million and I suspect when the facts really come out that it's going to be a lot more than that. That I, I suspect he's uh, minimalized his net worth and, uh, and, and I've looked over his returns and his financial disclosures and he has basically refused to disclose the value of a number of his investments uh, claiming that the people managing the investments refused to tell him or refused to disclose the information. I don't believe that but that's what he's saying. The facts will show and Obama and the Democrats will make a big deal about the fact that Mitt Romney was smart enough in my opinion but in their opinion uh, clever enough and sneaky enough to invest offshore to take an offshore focus in much of his tax planning. He's been able to reduce his taxes to under 14 percent. That's real great. That's lower than almost anybody in a civilized industrialized country can do. He uses the best of the best. I've looked at the techniques. They're clever. They require great and well-trained tax advising. None of it was illegal or in my mind immoral except there seems to be an attitude that it's immoral to take advantage of uh, tax loopholes. Well it's not immoral. Judge Learned Hand has made it clear it's not immoral but it's going to be the major campaign issue. They're going to make Mitt Romney look like a slimy little Mormon trying to hide his money and control the world uh, by virtue of clever manipulation at the expense of the poor and the middle class. Whether or not that's true, uh, it's going to make it a major, major, major issue as you read the newspapers and watch the news. It's going to be the topic of many discussions. It's going to generate focus, more focus, on uh, tax planning and offshore planning than ever before. That's step one. Here's step two. Step two is a crazy act called the Foreign Account Tax Compliant Act, which gives new meaning to the term ugly American. This uh, ill-conceived law was included in a jobs bill and what it does is it requires offshore banks to basically become fully transparent to the United States taxing authorities. It shifts the burden of compliance to the banks abroad and forces a 30% tax on transfers to that bank if they're not fully compliant with uh, FACTA. Now, many banks are not going to become compliant with FACTA. Why? Because it costs a whole lot of money. It's estimated that the average cost is $150 million for a mid-sized European bank. I've also heard many estimates that 40 to 45 percent of banks abroad are simply going to close their doors to American citizens. I don't know if it's going to be that extreme, but I know many banks, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Credit Suisse, they just don't want U.S. citizens uh, as customers because the U.S. government is just imposing too many burdens. We aren't welcome. It's, it's caused a great deal of consternation. We don't know what's going to happen with this. The banks are just sorting it out right now. But we got one thing where Mitt Romney's behavior is making offshore tax planning and offshore asset protection a major campaign issue with the Democrats characterizing it as a almost un-American technology. It's not. They're wrong. They're way off base, but that's what's happening. And then we have the United States government forcing foreign banks to carry the burden to make their books um, transparent. Well, those are the first two steps. What happens? Step three. The foreign government's going to push back. 
Nobody wants to be told by Uncle Sam how to behave. You can't tell the banks in Germany or the Congo or Belize or Switzerland how to behave and expect them to take it uh, comfortably and, and take it lying down. Because what is the United States response when they make application? It is very hard to get information when you're a foreign entity, a foreign government from the United States banking system on deposits by foreigners in the United States. We have made a huge, huge effort to attract foreign money. We treat U.S. deposits by foreigners as foreign source income, so there's no U.S. tax. There's 21 trillion, that's an awful lot of money, uh, dollars of foreign investments held in the U.S. And I believe that the foreign governments will demand similar transparency from our banks as a price of forcing their banks to comply with this. If that happens, much of this $21 trillion will flee America. Why? Because they don't want to get in trouble in their home country. So we have Obama fighting Romney with uh, U.S. tax planning and asset protection being the issue. We got the United States bullying the foreign governments and the foreign banks. We got the foreign banks pushing back. And we have U.S. citizens being excluded from many foreign banks. Well, what's the result? The U.S. citizens are becoming isolated and they're losing their options because the offshore banks do not want to do business with them. This is almost the same as exchange controls. It is going to become more and more difficult to move money abroad. If you've already got your accounts open and you've got your ducks in an order before everybody figures this out, you're going to be way ahead of the curve. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to do it. So I think we're going to have Americans losing their options and being isolated in the United States. And we're going to have significant capital flight from the United States. I believe that will be from fearful non-U.S. citizens who were using the United States banking system to hide their assets from their government and their taxing authorities. The United States has no problem doing that to other countries. They just don't want other countries doing that to us. Imagine what happens if we have one or two other financial debacles. Say the Spanish banking system fails. Say Italy follows. Say there's some more problems in Japan. Say there's another natural disaster. What's going to happen? We just are starting to have some upward pointing economic news. Guys, I'm not so sure that that's really upward pointing. I think we're in for some very significant trouble here. It'll be fun to look back in a year and see if I was right or wrong. I thank you for listening. I don't always teach. Sometimes I just give you an opinion. And I'm not always right, but I sure do enjoy doing it. Thank you very much.